both cars scheduled, planned. They let the guys go out, get a few laps under. In the case of the one, get one lap under their belt before putting new sticker Michelins on to try and go for the overall time. Uh, a wry smile from Mika Salo as his teammate Craig Lowndes was just in the wrong place at the wrong time as far as Mario Engel was concerned as they came down through the S's and Engel got very, very frustrated there and the right hand pedal mashed a couple of times and the AMG Mercedes-Benz out of shape coming down through there. And I think the look on Mika's face, just watch this again. Watch the back end of the Merc here, a big slide around. There's nowhere else to go. Lounge does give way at that point. He makes himself look like a superstar, but you're placed in the middle of the road and he's absolutely paggered that lap from Engel. But yeah. it, it's exactly what I was saying. It comes down to luck yes, because absolutely. neither of them could possibly have planned that. No. It was just the way it fell out. And the but Dipper... Engel's not happy though. <laughs> yeah, of all places, the Dipper is really only a one line racetrack. Yes. That might be the difference for Pulp perhaps, because he will be a very fired up young, very talented German race car driver behind the wheel of the number one car. So let's have a look at what Maro can do in number one. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go in qualifying. Car number 63, Will Davison behind the wheel. The Erebus car, they're fifth in the session with a 206.7. Where are they over in, they're still only ninth overall in the, uh, in the grid standing. So it's a fifth row start at the moment for the all Aussie team from the Erebus camp, but what's uh, Wilbo got? 50.8 to the first split. It's not bad. It's an improvement. It's a personal best. Bumpkin, uh, Bumpkin going very well too. Yeah, the, the Nissan GTR. Yeah, the 32 car, a 50.5 to the first split for the white number 32. So used to see the Nissan as 23, of course, but 32 reversed the numbers on the Nismo Digital Edge Performance GTR. Peter Cox in, so that will be. Uh, maybe a very short one lap run at the end uh, if they want it for the Largo team, for 23. Yeah, it'll have to be a quick stop if yeah. they do. I think it's um, too close now. Yeah, because uh, he's got to get whatever the work is if they are going to put a new set of tyres on and then uh, go. So uh, I think Peter Cox's uh, time may be limited. Thank you, Spurgeon. Back out in the McLaren, John. I, I think that we've got Andrew Cocotti back in the 37, back in the McLaren. I think Van Gisbergen got out when that McLaren got in, hearing from one of our Twitter correspondents in the grandstand on the front straight, blue helmet with a white cross got in. And I'm uh, fairly certain that's, that's uh, uh, Cocotti's, Cocotti's helmet. helmet. Yeah. So thank you to Dominic Window who tweeted at Spectatainment and gave us an extra set of eyes. So keep an eye for the split times on the 37 McLaren. Engel is so close to going quicker than Mika Salo. So Engel currently third overall. The number one car running down into the final corner. The splits haven't been the outright fastest, but it's been a very good lap nonetheless from Engel. Yeah. 20385 oh. goes to the top of the charts. Erebus back on top on the mountain. And that's a huge lap from Engel. It didn't look spectacular. The splits weren't great. They were good, but they weren't that great. But he, uh, his last sector was very good, and he went to the top. Don't pull the angle. No, <laughs> Craig no. Lowndes may well have done exactly the wrong thing coming down through the dipper the previous time because the dander is up. The red mist has descended for Mauro Engel, and he has put in a cracking lap. Two minutes, 3.8586 of a second. That is just remarkable in the big Mercedes-Benz defending this race win from last year. Now there is Bunkham getting out of the way. So he wasn't on a quick one, or at least if he was, he's backed out of it. And there's not enough time now uh, to Alex start a, another lap. Oh, no, Alex the, did a 5-3 last the, time around. The uh, McLaren, I bet, he's, I bet he's out of fuel. Shines, yeah, well that could be it. The, it would be, yeah, it would be surprising. The heroics uh, of Shane Van Gisbergen and getting them so close to pole. Uh, still third at the moment on the combined time. So the McLaren, I, I don't think anyone would have expected them to start on the second row of the grid at this year's Look 12 hour. But Let's Davidson watch. can do something still, yeah. uh, Craigs. So this hasn't been a bad lap for Will Davison. Currently a 204.4, his best, which gets them to fourth. So let's see if he improves this time by. So a second row start, perhaps, for the Erebus Mercedes. They'll get one more go yeah, if he needs it. One more go, and he's got a clear track ahead of him. The checkered flag four, is seven. not out. A 4-7. He's got one more go. So let's see what uh, the former FPR driver, now an Erebus V8 driver, can do. 
behind the wheel of car number 63. Can it be a front row lockout? I just, oh, Marinello Motorsport. So close for almost a full day. They had what they believed was their trophy. I'm just trying to work out whether the Nissan got across the line. I think it might have. 2053, the best in this session for Alex Bunker, and I think he's got one more lap as time has elapsed. The McLaren stranded at the side of the road, heading up towards the start of the cutting, but it's been pushed out of the way. Bunker's one lap was a 5 3. Oh, yeah, it's just an awesome job. Yeah, and he's, he's still out there, and I think he didn't. I'm, I'm certain he got through without the check and flag going out. The check and flag is waving now. That's an improvement for Will Davison on his previous best time. Oh, look at that as he turns it at the top of the mountain, almost oh. seeing air underneath the Mercedes Benz. He rides the curb on the right-hand side through McPhillamy, now down through the S's. The car is starting to look twitchy. He's leaning on this crazy. Great lap so far from Will. Currently fourth overall, third in this session, 2.04.46. The best lap coming to the end of the second sector of the 6.213k circuit. Betty watching on from pit lane. What's both their cars? It's a PB for the car. It's better. He's up. Can he get them into the top three, perhaps? Two or three and a half? Is there something like that in this car as he comes down Conrad for what will be his final time? Heading towards the chase, he's got across the white line on the left-hand side. Doesn't take a very aggressive line into the right-hander into the chase. Now, two, three more corners. There's tension down in the Erebus garage. They know there's something special. They'll have the delta. They'll be watching. They haven't called him into the pits. They think this is still on. He's down towards Maguire's for the final time. Time turns in, fantastic turn in from the big bend and the sprint to the line tells us. 4-2, couldn't do it, oh. couldn't do it. Missed out on a top three in qualifying by two tenths of a second. Great lap though from Will Davison. How was the commitment across the top of Mount Panorama? That was outstanding, wasn't it? Ooh, that would have raised the heartbeats. Both them coming through now as well. And his time about to update is a 5-3, so he hasn't improved. Uh, yeah, PB on his second lap, so 5-3, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's an improvement on that last lap for him. Yes, but that car misses out on a top three position. I'm thinking ahead to the media conference I'll host in a second, but I was looking forward to talking to the Nissan guys, but gee, that's still an impressive performance. And celebrations at Erebus Motorsport. They have won the Al, the Alan Simonson pole position trophy.